I'd like to welcome all of you to the Diane Kidd Gallery. This evening, we are very lucky to have Barkle with us for their display. Barkle's combined creative identity of Michael Bernhardt and Barry Whitaker, who they told me they're interchangeable, so just call them either name and they answer. <laughs> Two artists whose individual practices overlap and expand via collaboration. Michael is an assistant professor at Metropolitan State College of Denver, and Barry is an assistant professor of art at the University of Toledo. Their long distance collaboration becomes an important layer as they explore issues of communication, identification, and myth using a range of media. Their ultimate goal is to undermine self-righteousness while seriously spreading the ridiculous. So please help me welcome Barbara. Thanks for having us here. Thanks for coming out and enjoying some some texts, some signs, and some free food. So, so um, something that I should probably mention if you weren't reading the paper yesterday or haven't read the text on the on the wall, we have a number of pieces that are not here. They're out amongst uh, different places around Tiffin, and there is a map on the wall. So uh, since we don't have any maps to take away, I'd probably recommend that if you haven't had a phone with photo capability, which most people have one or their friends have one. Take a photo and then keep it with you so you can look them up because there's the addresses and then you can kind of, as you're exploring Tibet, you're in between the classes and you say, oh, I have to go drive around for a little bit, then see if you can take a look and find them. Uh, we've put on Twitter, we have, uh, if you just look up Barbell on Twitter, we're pretty easy to find. I have a lot of people with that name. Uh, you can find some photos of some of the pieces, but not necessarily get a chance to look, but a number of people already have mentioned that they've seen them, so that's, that's a positive that. This will be up for a week. This show will run a month to November. So, so um, we should probably mention that we met a number of years ago in graduate school, and we began collaborating as a way to avoid doing something that we were supposed to do. So if you ever have a reason to like procrastinate with homework, if you start an art project, that's usually a really good path. Uh, I think ours started with a paper plate because I had a paper plate for some unknown reason and I thought that it needed art on it. Um, and we both were supposed to be writing papers and we thought drawing on a paper plate was a lot more fun. So we sort of went on from there. We, uh, I guess to talk a little bit about our process because that might be a curious thing. We, uh, we each had classes at opposite times and so we would set a panel up and start doing a drawing on it and then another person would come back and would respond to what had been done by the person before so it was a collaboration where we were never there at the same time working on the same thing that was kind of our second piece i think that we did yeah uh, i don't remember that one it, it's true so that that's actually sort of set up how we how we continue to work so we work on pieces together but we live in completely separate places we've done things on different continents but like actually uh, collaborating just with a lot of a lot of emails, a lot of chat. Um, so we've done a lot of different kinds of things, but usually what starts us off is something that we either find really funny or something that we've just never done before. Um, I think I remember one time I said, um, there's a show coming up and we should put something in the show. What do you not want to do? And both of us looked at each other and said, performance. And so then that's what we did. Uh, anything that makes us a little uncomfortable or something that's like a little bit of a new direction. And, and in this case, none of this was necessarily new to us, but it was the combining of our interests in this way was, was something we hadn't done and hadn't done a lot of putting the work out in the public outside of the gallery setting. So that was also an interesting component. Yeah, you know, like the idea of engaging with people who might happen upon something and then um, check out the hashtag. Just it's an interesting way of communicating. It's a a way of connecting something that could be visual just in a gallery or something that you look at as advertising or some sign kind of taken up randomly and how that combines with social media and that there could be a life beyond the life inside a gallery space. So as far as a lot of this work, we were looking at things like graffiti. Obviously there's lots of great graffiti that we can pull inspiration from. Um, the language used on things like Twitter or Facebook. Um, Kind of playing with things that we see in in the environment you know going by the purina factory and constantly uh, sort of noting well that 
smells like cat food over there, always. That's, that's sort of a strange thing. And then finding a way to kind of play with that and what happens if we sort of protest that or point out something really obvious that everybody's just sort of trying to ignore constantly. And using playful ways to, to use the language around them. I think the humor, we hope, is something that comes across in the work. And I know oftentimes when you look at art, um, the thought is that there's always a super seriousness to it that is exclusive or elitist or that the common uh, individual who looks at it who's not an artist is not going to understand. But most people are more perceptive than they give themselves credit for. They understand more than they might assume. And so in this case, it's trying to, to highlight the fact that we're trying to undermine a little bit to say it's there, there's an openness to it that's engaging, that's maybe hopefully easily accessible, but has undercurrents of something a little more sophisticated on top of that. So if there's something critical or um, it's handled in a humorous way to not be offensive, I guess. Well, we, we like to make fun of things, but we don't mind making fun of ourselves in the process. So that's, that's an important part. It's more fun that way anyway. So um, there, some of these are, are more straightforward than others, uh, but sort of in a similar way where we put the signs out <coughs> down around the city and you kind of have to go find them to some degree. Um, there, there's at least one piece in here, maybe a couple that have a, another layer that you kind of have to dig for a little bit. We'll leave that one sort of open-ended if you, if you decide to, to explore a little bit more. But all of these have text related Subway. So, uh, if you don't see text, that means you haven't found it. Yes. So, um, is there anything else we haven't discussed? Um, maybe that. If anyone's in here. Well, we can we can entertain. I think questions. If anybody has specific questions about any of these, whether it's in group format or if you just come find us afterwards. But um, something that has been interesting in the process of making this, maybe more so than anything else we've done, is we've done a lot of driving for this project, which includes between here and Denver and back, and then from Denver to here and soon back, and then all around Tiffin multiple times. So we've seen a lot of Tiffin in the last week. It's kind of good. Yeah. So, um, well, thank you for having us. And if anybody has any questions or if you want to ask us later, any of that is fine. And please continue to eat food because it's there. It needs to be eaten. Do we have any questions? We want to know where you put the, this one here. The white this bread. one? Yeah. The, uh, white bread, the white bread. Yeah, that one um, down here is in front of a Wonder Bread. Um, facility and it was kind of an interesting moment because when we went there they were pulling down this wonder bread and hostess and they were dismantling the hostess sign yep. and they had been going through bankruptcy so it was kind of like odd and sad and funny all at the same time so um, if you look up here there's there's somebody up on the, on the roof that's pulling down the hostess letters uh, which was yeah, kind of a weird feeling at the time sort of just by chance we, we rolled up on that location, went in the front entrance, and were stopped by one of the employees. And it was kind of an interesting exchange about uh, an exchange of business cards. Like, well, maybe you could come back in a week or two, or I'll talk to my boss. And so we had to be a little bit more discreet about, all right, well, where's some public property near here, which is right underneath I-70 or I-25 in Denver, Colorado. Um, there was a, a news reporter for a local news channel that was building and taking down the hostess cake sign. So we thought, well, this is a good place. And they very talked to the, that photographer. And they said, yeah, this is public. You can be here. So that's kind of where we set up and then just shot across to the scene. And so yeah, we, we were trying to make sure that we didn't get ourselves in too much trouble, that we were chased off um, around the refinery. And, and so we had to find some other things. But, but the person who was chasing us off actually liked what we were doing. He thought it was funny. So he was like, OK, I really like this, but you guys probably need to get going. It took all about two minutes for us to be there. They have cameras every 30 feet uh, along a fence near that refinery because it's a pretty sensitive, secure area. So we were a little bit uh, risky in like, well, let's just set up right here. But I think that, that helped a lot. And then the humor, again, is what saved us because that individual that looked at it, they rolled their truck up like they were about to run us over. It was a little scary for a second or two. It's like, OK, now that's funny, but you still got to get out of here. And, then proceeded to talk to us for about 15 minutes about other places we could go that their business couldn't do anything about. Well, you could go across the street down York, 
we can't touch you over there, so you can totally shoot. And that's what happened with another photo with the big flame over it. It was the same refinery, but just a different aspect of it. So yeah, it's kind of fun going through that process, like being a little bit nervous, like, okay, I don't know if this is okay, but we're gonna try. We think it's okay. You know, so we, we got to meet a few people along the way. It was a little un unexpected as well. Anything else? Well, thank you. Yes, thank you very much for sharing your sign language and bringing a little bit of the ridiculousness to tonight. Nice. <laughs> I appreciate it. And uh, feel free to ask questions through the course of the evening. That's why they're here. And uh, again, we thank you.